Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist. Our brains are always expecting. They're always trying to anticipate and predict what's gonna happen next. And we need this mechanism in order to be able to navigate our way through life. However, it's this very mechanism of always expecting and predicting what's gonna happen next that enables us to get stuck in these compulsive loops, whether it's with food or anything else that you find yourself stuck in what feels like a self-destructive cycle. I would say there are a few things that have a greater influence on our behavior than what we're expecting. Someone called Holstein and their posse came up with this eating expectancy inventory, which is a load of beliefs around food and your expectations of food that people then had to answer and scale with how much they agreed or disagreed. And it went from at one end of the spectrum, seeing food as pleasurable and rewarding and enjoyable up to the other end of the spectrum, which was all about seeing food as a way to get some relief from distress. So one was about creating something positive with the eating experience, and the other was about getting away from something negative. Now, maybe you might be able to predict what happened, maybe not, but with binge eating, people were much more likely to struggle with binge eating if they had this expectation that food and eating was gonna be able to get rid of distress and painful emotions. Those that saw the value of enjoying food and taking pleasure in food were less likely to binge. If you are stuck in some kind of negative cycle with your eating, if your beliefs and your expectations remain unchanged, chances are you're gonna stay in this cycle. This is why this part is a really important piece of the puzzle. Now, if we think about binge eating as a way to get some relief from distress, if you are restricting and over controlling your food, you're going to have a buildup of an urge to binge or compulsively eat. And then when you do, you're going to experience some relief. This is a very natural survival mechanism. The binge is trying to protect you because it thinks that you are at risk. So before you look at any of your other expectations of the food, we have to look at this piece first. And whenever I talk about restriction and binge eating, there's always somebody who comes at me to tell me it's not about restriction for them. And then if I talk about binge eating and I don't mention restriction, someone comes at me to say binge eating is all about restriction. Can we just agree that there can be many reasons why somebody might experience compulsive eating? For me, I didn't do a great deal of restriction, but I was doing a lot of last supper eating. I kept planning to restrict, planning to fast, planning to do all these kinds of things that was triggering my binge eating. When I stopped trying to pursue intentional weight loss, my binge eating did reduce, but it didn't vanish because I had emotional triggers and emotional reasons for my compulsive eating as well. So I definitely fell into this category of expecting the food to bring some relief from what I was feeling. And for me, the emotional triggers that were the hardest that came up time and time again was shame, loneliness, and disconnection. The shame, especially because I just had times where I, I just didn't want to be me. I just wanted to check out from having to be me for a little bit. And food seemed to be quite effective at that. But for as long as I thought it was effective, it's never gonna get out of that cycle. What I realized, and I think this was a slow realization, is that Using food in this way, trying to cope with these feelings, was the very thing that was creating more of them. So my binging just brought about more feelings of shame, more feelings of loneliness and disconnection. And when I started to see this and the, the illusion that it was helping in some way started to fall away, that's when things started to shift in my emotional relationship with food. I had to address the shame and this sense of disconnection. And the shame came from these expectations that I had, that's that word expectation again, that I expected that I should be like this and I should be able to show up like this and I should feel like this and I shouldn't binge and this, 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 this. When I started removing these expectations, the shame came down. So if you're someone who resonates with this idea of in that moment, like wanting the food to just relieve something for you, is trying to understand what is the actual expectation. 
the expectation being food is going to help right now. Food is going to make me feel better. So finding the expectation, whatever it might be for you, and going, is this true? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, then chances are there's a lot of habitual binge eating going on for you. So looking into things about riding out binge urges can be useful, but mm, with a real caveat that if you are restricting and you try to ride out binge urges, you could make it worse. If the answer is yes, it's working. And to me, it was working to some degree, like looking, is this really working overall in the management of this feeling? So there's something else that's requiring my attention that isn't about the food. For me, it was about how I was talking to myself about myself. That required my attention. And without doing some work there, I couldn't have changed how I was eating. If the food is meeting your expectations and there doesn't feel like there's anything to challenge there because it's like, no, food really does help. It's not making anything worse over here. It's really helping with this area of my life. Then it's that area of your life that needs the attention. The food is just, the food is just a symptom. It's not the problem. I just want to make sure I get that part clear for you. If your eating is causing you more emotional distress overall, then the food you're eating is the problem. Whatever's going on with the food, that's the problem. But if the eating really is helping with something else outside of that, it's not the food that's the problem. It's the thing that you are using the food to try to help with. And it can be very convenient to put all our attention into food being the problem when actually it's something else that's screaming for our attention. So is food the problem or is food helping you deal with another problem? And is it actually helping you deal with another problem? Because I was thinking that it was helping or part of me thought it was helping. And when I realized that it wasn't, it became much easier then to try to separate the two, to separate my shame from my binge eating. Because they were just, they were kind of the same thing. Because the binge eating was causing the shame other expectations that are always worth a challenge is the expectation of well if I have one I'm, I'm then going to be out of control and I'm going to binge for as long as you go into it with that expectation in your mind nothing else is possible and it is it can be challenging work to challenge the expectation because we're always using the past to predict so it's like well this is what's always happened in the past so this is what's always going to happen this is how we stay stuck in the past if you truly believed that you could have something that you normally felt like was a risky food and feel satisfied and enjoy it and be able to just relax without it turning into compulsion, then you will be able to do it. This is the challenge. We often have to change our minds first before our behavior follows. And we're like, no, no, I need to see the proof in my behavior first and then I'll change my mind. Another expectation that I think holds people back is you are expecting that if you don't binge now, this feeling's never going to go away or it's just going to keep coming back and coming back and coming back. If there's restriction at play, it will. <laughs> so there could be a certain truth in that. But in which case, again, like if it's restriction and trying to control that's causing your binge eating, then maybe the problem is the restriction and the trying to control, not the binge eating. The binge eating is the effect of that. And because so much of our expectation is played out unconsciously, these are not necessarily thoughts at the forefront of your mind, but it's all playing out back here. So we need to make these unconscious expectations conscious. I'll often invite people to, when they're experiencing that, that urge or that build up, to ask themselves the question, what am, I, what am I expecting this food to give me? And asking the question in the moment you want the food is going to be much more accurate than you asking your question in a time when you're not necessarily particularly thinking about food or craving. Quite often the information that we need about what's going on in our mind is going on at the time it's happening and then when we're not in it, we're, we're just confused and baffled to why we keep ending up back in the same place again. So I'd invite you to spend some time thinking about this, like what am I expecting, what is it I'm believing and getting those down as sentences that you can then look at and observe with a questioning mind to be able to look at the validity of them. So when stuff's going on unconsciously, it doesn't get rationalized, it doesn't get questioned. It's just taken as truth. In the moment, it feels so true that if you start eating, you're not gonna be able to stop. And so often, people try to change their behavior around food by focusing on their behavior. But it's our belief system 
and then our emotions that dictate our behavior. So you want to change your behavior and then like everything else will change. And often it's the other way around. Let's look at these belief systems and these structures that's propping up this behavior. Because if you don't, any behavior changes you make will just be temporary. The old belief system will be triggered at some point and you'll end up back where you started. So, food for thought. Anyway, I've been Sarah Dosange. Thanks for watching this and I will see you on the next video.